So you know how to find a data set. You know how to do some basic sorting. Now what I'm gonna do is build on that and show you in Excel how to do a lot more sorting, how to take two, three, even four variables and compare them with each other in a really elegant way that's built into Excel. So that's what I wanna show you today. Crime data, especially sometimes federal data, comes like this, lots of complex sorting. There are columns and sub-columns, two, three, four rows assigned to an area. Each discrete uh, kind of crime has two rows, a total. All of that's great, it's nicely organized. It doesn't lend itself well to what I'm gonna show you today, which is pivot tables within Excel. So I just wanted to show you, if you get a data set like this, it's not ideal for pivot because what pivot does is it takes A1 and jumps over to the last column and the last row and imports it into a different kind of data editor that's built in. So this data set doesn't lend itself well to that. I just wanted to show you. So I'm gonna open this Major League Baseball data. And you see me do some searching already. So now let me tweak this to the Excel spreadsheet so it's full screen. Uh, this is, I think it's 878 rows here. Let me, let me check. I'm going to scroll down here. I think it's 878 rows of data on Major League Baseball player salaries from a few years ago. So yeah, it goes to 878. By the way, you're going to want that number handy. Let me take this stuff away. Uh, you're going to want to remember 878. I'll show you why in a minute. So what could we find out from this data just by searching the data? What questions might you might have? Let's try to figure out who the most highest paid player is. So I'm going to go to this first name in column A. Again, hold shift command on a Mac, it's shift control. Then I'm going to hit uh, down arrow while I'm holding shift command. I hit arrow right to go to the last column. Down arrow takes me to row 878. And now I'm going to go to data, sort, column D, largest to smallest. And let's see who is the highest played, paid player in Major League Baseball. Sometimes I have to do this twice and I don't know why, but watch. I'm gonna do it a second time and it's just gonna work. I can't explain why it takes two tries. <laughs> Mike Trout who's an outfielder with the Angels. Uh, again, this was a few years ago, but uh, $34 million. Clayton Kershaw is a pitcher with the Dodgers, also $34 million. Clearly, if you're a really, really good baseball player, uh, you can make a lot of money. And so, so that's a quick look. If I scroll to the bottom, I can see league minimum is about half a million bucks. And a whole lot of people make league minimum, $545,000. So that's one thing we can find out real quick. Uh, but it's kind of hard to search for other stuff in here. So let me do this. A couple things built into Excel. Maybe you've used these, maybe you haven't. Let's go figure out what the total salaries are for all of baseball. So I'm just gonna put in a formula. I usually type in my own. So I'm gonna hit equals sum and then uh, let's see, D2 colon D878. I just happen to know the rows. This is the first row to the bottom row. So total salaries are almost $4 billion across all 877 ball players in the major leagues. Let's say we wanted to figure out average. Can we do that? So I'm going to do this equals instead of sum, I'm just going to type the word average. And I'll do the exact same formula, D2 to D878. The average salary is four and a half million bucks. So it's kind of interesting because uh, what we've identified is Mike Trout, Clayton Kershaw make way more than the average salary, but most players make about one tenth the average salary or one ninth, 545. Now, look, nobody's going to starve at half a million bucks for playing baseball half a year, but big disparity in salaries. Now, here's the problem. There are a bunch of other questions we'd like to ask and get answered, but we don't know how to do that with just an Excel spreadsheet. Like, uh, which position gets paid the most across these teams? What are the average salaries by team? Do some teams have a bigger payroll than other teams? We can answer those questions in pivot tables. And again, if you want to download this data set from that shared folder and play along while I do this, uh, it's not a bad idea. I'm going to up here at the top hit insert pivot table. Now, remember me telling you, remember 878? We have four columns, A, B, C, D. Starts with row two, really row one is the title. Row 878 is the end of the data. Again, this is one of my mental checks that I like to put in. So I'm going to hit insert pivot table. And it's going to say, is this your range of data? This is a little cryptic, but it makes sense. I see in here A1 
and D 878. So I know this is correct. That's my data because I went and checked before I tried to load the pivot table. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to bring up this odd uh, configuration. Now, don't worry. If you still want your original data, watch. Right down here at the bottom, if I hit Major League Baseball 2018, there's my original data. It's even still sorted. If I scroll to the bottom, it still has my total and average right there at the bottom. But I'm going to go to sheet one. And by the way, you can rename this. You can just click right and rename. Um, and I've got my pivot table. So let's do this. I want to compare salary, obviously, with some different things. So let's say uh, position. So I'm going to put position down here in rows. And salary, I'm going to put in values. And it's going to show me what the different positions are. Now, let me format something. Uh, I think I can do it up here. Format cells. Excellent. So this is currency. I'm going to select currency zero decimal places. The reason I'm doing this is it's a lot easier to figure out what this money means if I have commas. Now I can look and say first base, $428 million. Now this is aggregate. This is all first basemen, uh, all catchers. But we're starting to see some interesting information uh, based on this. Starting pitchers make over a billion dollars, all starting pitchers across baseball. Now, let's say I wanted to sort this highest to smallest. I can do that. I can't do it the same way I did before. I can't hit data sort. It doesn't work the same way in, uh, in a pivot table. But watch, there's a little pull down here by in the first column always has a little pull down. If I pull that one down, I get a lot of options. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to sort by I don't want to sort by position. I want to sort by salary, and then I want descending. And so I just changed that, and now it shows highest to lowest. So designated hitters, all of them in the whole league, 74 million total. Starting pitcher, uh, 1.1 billion dollars. Now, what else might we want to know? How would you like to know the average salary of a pitcher? Because this is all of them added up. It says sum of salary down here in values. If I click the letter I, I can change sum to average. And this will tell me the average salary of a hitter or a pitcher. Now, all of a sudden, by average salary, Designated hitter makes more than a pitcher. Isn't that interesting? All right, what else can I do with this? How about by team? Let me bring team down here. Now, team is there. You see the teams, but it's kind of jumbled. And the reason is the order here in rows. Team is under position. If I move team above position, it gives me a more logical look. So here's a look at average salary of starting pitchers by team. Look, the Braves. Uh, first base starting pitcher, 4 million. Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher, almost 9 million. So you can start to tell a story this way with pivot tables that some teams pay a whole lot differently. Boston and Arizona pay their pitchers more than twice as much. Now, one pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, making 40, $34 million can really impact your average salary. So you have to keep that in mind. But pivot tables are a great way to go in and interrogate data and start to tell a story in a more complicated way. Uh, and that's what I like about this. Is so, so that's just that's a quick look at pivot tables. Again, that data set's there if you want to go play with pivot tables. It's neat because you can compare two, three, four variables. I mostly use pivot tables not for data visualization, but for writing an article. So if I'm trying to write a complicated article and I have a data set, pivot tables is great because it lets me go sort of figure things out. And all of a sudden, I could write a lead line like Arizona and Boston, their average pitcher salary is double what it is in half a dozen other cities for baseball players. So just like that, I can draw a nice firm conclusion that I can back up with data. Could never have figured that out with just a raw data set in Excel, but pivot tables, piece of cake. 